Do you work for the news? Yes, I do. I'm a reporter. Where's the camera? Oh, I'm not a TV reporter. I'm a radio reporter. Oh. Are you disappointed? Did something happen? Do you mean, like, a fire? No. I'm doing an interview. That's part of my job, too. How come you're a reporter? Oh, I like this job. I used to work in an office. I hated that. Yeah? Yeah. I worked in the mailroom. I was in that one room all day, you know? So I quit that job. Guess what I did next? What? I worked in a place where they raised rats for laboratories. Really? Yeah. Cool. Then I went to college. Then I got this job. How does that work? Do you want me to show you? Come on. We'll do an interview. So, where are your father and sister? Mom, listen. She interviewed me, but not for television. She's only on the radio. Uh, who's on the radio? The reporter. She told me she's on the radio. Mm. And you know what? She says she quit her job because she hated it. As a reporter? No, in an office. She had to stay in one room all the time. And then, you won't believe this, she says she fed rats. What? You know, the rats they use in signs? Yeah? Those rats. She fed them. She told me. But mom, isn't that so cool? I want to do that. Feed rats? No, be a reporter. Mmm. That's good, honey. Except I'm going to be on TV. <laughs> Can you turn it on? Fine. First you turn the computer on like this. Then you turn on the monitor. Then you turn on the printer. So far so good. Now what? You open the program. Either click on the icon or Type the command on the keyboard. Okay. So I hit here to... What happened? I lost it. It's gone. Relax. When that happens, just hit these two keys. Why? Well, it says to the computer, don't do what I just told you to do. Okay. Go on. Hit those two keys. Okay. I type the correct command and... Hey! You're in the program. Great! That wasn't so hard, was it? Nope. What's next? Now just start at the beginning and work your way to the end. Good luck. How do I get there? Right. Drive north on Route 93. Mm-hmm. Take Route 1 north. Go over the Tobin Bridge. Mm-hmm. Keep on the 1 until you get to Saugus. Take the exit by Walgreens. There are signs for Melrose and Stoneham. Okay. Go up the ramp. 
That's back over the bridge across Route 1. Take the next right. That's south on 1, back towards Boston. Then it's just down the highway about 300 feet on the right. Okay, great. I'll see you there. Bye. Uh-oh. Route 1 North. Over the Tobin Bridge. Entering Saugus. So far, so good. Take the exit from Melrose. Back across Route 1. South to Boston. What's the matter, Kevin? He's in love. I never said that. Oh, when did you meet her? Two weeks ago, since he met her, he can't sleep and he can't eat. He can't talk. It's been nearly a month, actually. It sounds serious to me. Ha! Huh. <laughs> I know how you feel, Kevin. I fell for my ex-husband so fast my head was spinning. When I met my husband, we waited five years to get married. Then we had a beautiful family. Five years. When I married him, I really knew him. There's no surprises. So look before you leave. Nula, I think this boy's already left. This is it. It's four rooms and a bath. The entrance hall is small, but look, it leads to a nice big living room. This side faces south. It gets a lot of light. This is the dining room. The woodwork's just lovely, isn't it? You'll notice that all the floors are hardwood. The kitchen is through here. Lots of cupboards. Dishwasher and disposal. There's a washer-dryer in the basement. You're allowed to use it. And this is the bedroom. Lots of closet space. 
the bathroom's right next door. It's fully updated with new fixtures and more closet space. What do you think? I'm not doing all the laundry. I've made some changes to your marketing plan. I hope you don't mind. No, of course not. It was very helpful. Mm -hmm. I want to get things right. Easier said than done. Oh, yes. Sometimes it feels like we're in Ho Ho Hotel. Have you ever seen that film? <laughs> oh, I love that movie. Remember the bellhop? He keeps thinking he can smell cheese. And he sniffs the guests. <laughs> I like the way the chambermaids put crumbs in the beds of people they don't like. <laughs> and the guests can't sleep. And they complain to the manager. They can't sleep because there are crumbs in the bed. <laughs> <laughs> and he says, stop eating in bed. <laughs> Oh, well, at least we don't have those problems. Suddenly, our situation looks much better, doesn't it? I'd just like a trim. Whatever you want. So what do you think of him? Kevin? <laughs> Who do you think? I'm not sure. I like the way he talks. I like the way he smiles. I like the way he looks. So you like him? He makes me laugh all the time. He's very sociable. He has a lot of confidence. He can deal with any situation. He's really smart too, isn't he? Didn't you say he used to be a, a physicist? Oh, that's a long story. But he is pretty smart. How old is he? My age. And he's had all these interesting experiences because he's so well traveled. Mm -hmm. Should we mm -hmm. shampoo? Sure. How's that? Great. He's really wonderful. You know, for someone who's not sure, you sound pretty sure. You see, Stephen, your haircuts always clear my mind. You would not believe what just happened to me. Wendy, are you all right? Picture this, OK? I'm on my way to work. I'm waiting in the subway. The train pulls in. The doors open. But it's packed. People can't get in. I see a little space. So I swing my bag in front of me to get on the train. And the doors shut on the straps. Bam! And they don't open. Oh, no. The people right inside the car see this and start to shout at the conductor. He doesn't hear them. Meanwhile, I'm beating on the door and shouting. The train leaves. You're joking. The train leaves and takes my pocketbook with it. There it goes, down the track. Unbelievable. Well, then what happened? Thank goodness someone turned my bag in at the lost and found. Do you believe it? Mugged by a train. That's city life for you. You have to be in better shape than that. Carl. It was heavy. That's why you need stamina and strength. Look at me. I work out in the gym three times a week because the job demands it. You do that for work? Absolutely. Carl, we do that at work. 
we don't sit at a desk all day. We don't stare at a computer for hours. We're active. Isn't that enough? I quit smoking. I eat healthy, balanced meals. I sleep eight hours a night. I am the picture of health, Peter. That means I do a better job. Oh boy. Hey, watch and learn. Carl's giving me a hard time. Why? He says I should be in better shape. What is he talking about? You look fine. Carl says he works out three times a week. He goes to a gym. So what? He says he does it for work, so he can lift the bags. Well, that's fine for him. That's not all. He says he quit smoking. Ah, uh, except for the occasional cigarette he sneaks. He does. How do you know? I sneak with him, occasionally. He told me he eats healthy, balanced meals. <laughs> what? Carl, make that a large pepperoni pizza? A apple pie and ice cream, Carl? <laughs> Peter, Carl never met a french fry he didn't like. But he said... Hi, Carl. What have you got there? Hi. Just a little lunch. Low-fat yogurt, tuna salad, Chocolate cake. Hey, a guy's got to eat. George, what are you doing? I'm working. Don't you hear the alarm? Yes, it's horrible. Is there any way we can turn it off? Turn it off? It's just a drill. George, it is an emergency drill. It's important. What do I have to do? It's all here. Read the instructions. If you discover a fire, call 911. Give the address. Boston Sheraton Hotel. 39, 39 Dalton, Dalton Street. Street. They discovered the fire, Nula. The alarm's already on. What else? Don't panic. Shut any open windows. Leave your office. Shut all the doors behind you. Go to your nearest exit. Do not use the elevator, use the stairs. Leave the building. Women and children first. It doesn't say that. Dane, are you ready? I'll be right down. Don't worry, we have plenty of time. Hi. Right. The train to New York doesn't leave till 1.30 or so. Let's see. Do you mean the 125? Yeah, that's it. Kevin, that's a local, see? It's in blue. It stops everywhere. It arrives in New York at 7.39 tonight. Well, we don't want that. Is there an express? I see. They're in red. Next one leaves at 1.10. One ten. One ten. Damn. Next train after that. 415. It's not there. The 110. 
It's got a symbol beside it. A square. What does that mean? This train does not run on weekends. The menu is so important. Oh, yes. We're working on it. We're interviewing for a new chef. Good. Our head chef makes the restaurant very exciting. Jarmusch Block? Jarmusch Block. Jarmusch Block. Where is he from? Poland. Actually, it's an interesting story. He first came to the U.S. with a Polish circus. Circus. <laughs> yes. <gasps> Jarmusch the Clown. He was a famous juggler. No! He used yes. kitchen knives. Really? Whatever happened to him? He left the circus and went solo. Oh, is there much work for knife jugglers in the United States? Well, he worked in a comedy club in New York. He had a routine based on food. That's where our CEO, Jim Bigelow, found him. Jim Bigelow? Mr. Bigelow. Mr. Bigelow! He found out Jarmusch had worked at the Hotel Europa in Warsaw as a fully trained chef. But after six months, Jarmusch left for the circus. So, Jarmusch the Clown is now Jarmusch the Chef. But does he still juggle kitchen knives? <laughs> Not when I'm around. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning. Hi. Welcome back. Did you have a good trip? Wonderful. Wonderful and very productive. You didn't work the whole time, did you? No. We had time to explore. We wandered around Prague quite a bit. What a city. It's supposed to be beautiful. It is. The hotel was right in the center of the old city. We walked everywhere. We shopped. We went to some fine restaurants. But even better, we went to a little lake. Where? About 60 miles northwest of Prague, near Karlovy Vary. Oh, it was surrounded by farms and forests and hills, too, though they weren't very high. We had a wonderful picnic. No one was there but us. Did you work at all? Oh, yes. You and I can talk about that right now. You don't have plans for lunch, do you? Time to go. So, how was your day in the Berkshires? Really nice. Did Kevin drive? Yep. How's he doing? He's getting very comfortable. Maybe too comfortable. How? He got a speeding ticket. In that car? We weren't in a hurry or anything. He's just very competitive. If someone passes him, he has to drive faster. I don't like it at all. Just before he got the ticket, a Porsche went by. He tried to keep up with a Porsche? <laughs> that's very sad. Really, but that's not the worst. He refuses to ask for directions. <sighs> So does Dean. I hate that. We were wandering around western Massachusetts and he didn't have a clue about where we were. But would he stop at a gas station and ask? No. They have to discover it for themselves. Mm -hmm. And then, an hour later, when they accidentally stumble upon the place, they say, see, I told you. I knew where, I knew where it was. It was. <laughs> Men. Men. Hello, Dee Dee. This is Sharon Soleil at the Sheraton Boston. I have a special request. I wonder if I could come over and talk to you about it. Great. Hi. So let me get this straight. 
He doesn't want his regular suite at the hotel. Right. It's too small for him this time. He wants to rent a house? Yes, he wants a house with a garden. With a garden? Why? And he wants a large kitchen, living room, and dining room. It has to have plenty of light and central air conditioning. It must be near transportation, shopping, and the river. How many bedrooms? Nine. Did I hear you correctly? Nine bedrooms? Who is this client, the Vienna Boys Choir? Maybe he wants it for a song. Well, there is something in Boston that fits his needs. Great. Unfortunately, the mayor lives there. Do you think he'd mind moving out for a month? Hey, Carl. Here's a postcard from Nina from Prague. I saw Nina here two minutes ago. Oh, they've been back for days. She writes, I miss my baby, but I'm glad I'm here. What else? She says they've just arrived. Boy, this took a long time to get here. <laughs> she says it's beautiful and she's already in love with the city. I've never been. Me neither. She makes it sound great. She said they had done a lot of walking and she was going to do a lot more walking when she got back. Hmm. Let's see. It's a funny thing about travel. What? People go all that way to a completely new place. They see their lives from a new perspective, you know? Sure. And they make decisions, like they're going to do a lot more walking. Travel's a funny thing. Have a good trip, sir. Baseball, tennis, look at that, football, yeah, American football. Hmm. I couldn't agree with you more, Kevin. I think football is a violent, overrated sport. Do you call that violent? With all that padding, you don't see padding in rugby. Now take baseball, game of skill, finesse, strategy. I don't agree with you there, Dean. Let's face it, baseball's just a dull version of cricket. What do you think? I'm with you, Kevin. Baseball is boring. Not as boring as soccer. What? Now that's boring. I say let them use their hands. You're both very unreasonable. Kev, name one sport more boring than soccer. Golf. What? He's got a point. That's your opinion. Oh, what's your opinion? Golf is very exciting. <laughs> oh. We have the results of the guest survey. The good news is our guests think we do a very good job. But we did learn more about some of their preferences. Like what? For instance, in the newsstand, 12% of all guests think there should be more foreign newspapers or magazines. I certainly agree. 28% would like to see more news magazines and fewer fashion magazines. 26% would like to see more fashion and lifestyle magazines and less news. I wonder who's who. Hmm, men and women. Business travelers and vacationers? They can't tell from the numbers. 14% had no opinion about the newsstand, 9% think we should sell cold drinks, 7% want a newsstand on every floor, and 4% don't know we have a newsstand. How can they miss it? They're having too good a time to notice. <laughs> <laughs> This is exactly what I've been looking for. 
I'm having my kitchen remodeled. Cool. William, look at this. Here, she's had her nose fixed. Then, she's had her wrinkles removed. And here, she's had her behind lifted. I think it's a big deal when I get my hair cut. Seriously? Which, by the way, you didn't notice. But I did notice. What? You got your hair cut. You hate it. It's fine. It's very nice. I'm gonna have this packed up. Oh! You can get your ears flattened. Really, Wendy, don't change a thing. Remember that project we talked about? Welcome to the United States of America. When you arrive, follow the arrivals sign. First, you have to go through immigration and passport control. Make sure you have the correct visa, if needed, before you arrive. And then, it's time to get your bags. Follow signs to the baggage claim. TV monitors will tell you exactly where your luggage will arrive. After you get your baggage, go through customs. If you have something to declare, Go through the red exit. If not, go through the green exit. We hope you enjoy your stay in the United States. Have a nice day. did this on the computer? You're just a big genius. Hi, Sharon. It's Debbie. Hi. Are you taking a vacation this summer? I'm trying to plan Dean's going away party. Okay, so you're away from August 10th to August 17th. Thanks. I'll let you know what the plans are. So, Simon, you'll be away in late August, but not for long. 
Do you know how long? Okay. Thanks. Hi, Wendy. It's me. Will you be back from the Cape by the 30th? Great. Hey, did I tell you what James... You'll be back at work on September 4th. Thanks, William. I'll let you know what we're doing. Kevin, Kevin, I didn't realize you don't get a vacation until November. I'm sorry I brought it up. So, what are you doing on September 6th? Uh-huh. Kevin, don't you dare tell Dean. Five, four, three. Sun Yu Chang is a member of the trade delegation now in Boston. They've been talking to our governor. How are the talks going, Mr. Chang? Very, very well. Can you tell us how well? It's a negotiation. We don't agree on every point, and we are dealing with issues that affect trade everywhere. For instance? Inflation, of course here compared with inflation in our country. Also employment. How much of our workforce is involved in trade with your country? These affect our discussions. Will there be a trade agreement? Oh yes. We are making progress all the time. Thank you for speaking with us, Mr. Chang. Uh, my pleasure. Sun Yu Chang ending on a positive note. This is Heather Vallejo reporting live from the Sheraton Boston for the Business Network. Okay, we're all set. Thank you, Mr. Chang. So what's your plan, Dean? I mean, after your internship? I finish school. After school, I look for a job. With your qualifications, you won't have much of a problem. I wish that were true. Lots of qualified people can't get work. Because businesses can't afford to hire people? That's what they say. Especially with benefits. So I may not get a job for a long time. And if I can't get a job, unemployment must be too high. Of course, I still have to pay off my student loans. You have to pay for university yourself. Doesn't the government subsidize you? Not much. You're pretty much on your own. Funny how the newspaper headlines start to affect your life. Unemployment, inflation. Well, that's not very cheerful, is it? If only the sports pages were better. Can I help you? Yes. I'm looking for something for my wife, please. What kind of thing are you looking for? I'm looking for a picture frame. A very simple one. Nothing fancy. In wood or silver? Silver. Fine. Let me take a look. I think a smaller one would be better. Fine. It's a little too heavy. My wife wouldn't like these sharp corners. Do you have any with a stand so she can set it up on a table? 
Ah, very nice. Very nice. You have it in gold. He's been fabulous. We'll miss him a lot. Will you get a new intern? Yes, but we'll need two new ones to replace Dean. I think we should just hire him when he graduates. Maybe we will. What's in the box, Nula? A portable CD player. Oh, is that what we chipped in for? Great. I have something else. What is it? A soccer ball from Kevin and me. Oh, Dean will like that. He'll come to his senses someday. Jarmusch, if I gain one ounce from this cake, I will kill you. They're right behind us. Oh. oh. <laughs> Kevin, you can't afford to take us to this restaurant. Oh, for a friend like you, Dean, don't think anything of it. 